Welcome to the ThinApp Bootcamp series, Design Best Practices. My name is Raymond Duso, Senior Consultant and User Computing Center of Excellence, Global Strategy and Enablement. Today's agenda, key takeaways from this session, plan and design timeline, ThinApp design process overview. So our key takeaways. It's very important to follow the new ThinApp design process. We've spent a great deal of time validating this process against a number of large enterprises, and we're convinced that it's the fastest way to streamline how partners and consultants deliver design enablement uh, services from a ThinApp perspective to customers. Listen to and document the customer pain points. This is obviously a common sense best practice but uh, we find that it's been overlooked time and time again with uh, a number of consultants and partners, so we're, we're trying to uh, refresh this point and make sure that it's, it's very focused during one of these engagements. Don't be afraid of ThinApp streaming. Again, there's a lot of misconceptions about how to and when to use ThinApp streaming, so it's definitely something to focus on and we talk about it uh, during this session today. Whenever possible, reuse existing deployment infrastructure. This, again, might seem as a common sense best practice, but it is overlooked uh, a lot. And we need to make it clear that uh, the, the fastest way to achieve ROI from a ThinApp perspective is to essentially not break what the customers already have. So again, we're going to go over those types of concepts uh, today in the session. Don't be afraid of third-party tools. Again, this also might seem like a very obvious uh, best practice, but it is overlooked time and time again. Uh, a lot of consultants fall into the trap of just letting the customers dictate what exactly is going to happen throughout an engagement. So a true best practice of this thin app design is to find a happy medium between doing what the customers want and then providing those suggestions what they don't know they want yet. So it's, it's, uh, we'll go over that today as well. So let's get into the design process overview, uh, new methodology and best practices framework. Here's a quick timeline of what a plan and design engagement looks like. So with every project you've got to kick off uh, which leads into design enablement workshops. Those are anywhere from one to one week to two days, uh, depending upon the customer's uh, the scope of the project. During these enablement workshops, you're doing a number of interviews with stakeholders and uh, team members, which transitions then into uh, often a thin app jumpstart or overview session. Sometimes customers acquire uh, the ThinApp technology and jump right into a project. Other times they've worked with it for a series of months and then ease into a larger engagement. So it's up. So during the design enablement workshop, it's very important to determine the ThinApp skill set of the customer, and then make a judgment call as to whether you know a two-day overview session or maybe a half-day, you know, workshop uh, is required. And there is flexibility for that in the materials. After the thin app jump starts or overview sessions, you transition back into a series of stakeholder meetings from each team, and that, that's across the enterprise. So you're meeting with network uh, admins and storage admins and VDI admins and electronic, you know, ESD admins. So you're getting a feel for the entire enterprise and where their applications line up. So again, uh, very intense interview process, and the, the result of these meetings and interviews is the design. So after those meetings, you transition into creating the deliverables, uh, which transitions into validation meetings with the customer and other internal uh, resources, at which point you then present the final deliverable to the customer. So again, that's a basic timeline of the uh, thin app plan and design. Now let's look at the new design process overview. So at first we start from use case definition. We then work our way to target application list. 
which transitions into application integration design, application management design, packaging infrastructure standards, and deployment infrastructure design. And we're going to break down each of those sections uh, now. So use case definition. Again, listen to and document the customer pain points. Obviously, this is a common sense best practice, but again, it's something that's overlooked uh, a great deal because the customers honestly want to vent to you. They want to tell you where their pain is, and oftentimes it could be hidden uh, inside of other scenarios. So don't be too quick to solve problems immediately. Sometimes the true customer pain is buried below the surface of other scenarios. Whenever possible, avoid internal politics. Business unit tension will become clear during this phase. Again, this happens quite a bit as various groups argue over sometimes something as simple as who's going to be the application deployment mechanism of choice. Uh, I've, had, I've had situations where you know, uh, there are two large distribution mechanisms uh, in place for the organization, and both of those teams are arguing. So again, it's up to the, this design enablement session to try and bridge the gap and, and find a way to ultimately provide a proper design and use case for this, this enterprise. It's important to understand the core ThinApp use cases, but do not try to force those on the customers. So obviously the, the obvious uh, use cases, you know, IE6 for Win7, you know, Java versions, you know, all of these are op more than likely going to come up during the engagement. But don't start there. Don't try to force those on the customer. You really need to give the customer time to vent with you and you know, let those types of scenarios unfold. It's very important. Try to determine desktop and application migration plans for current and future projects. This will help you make decisions later uh, with regards to VDI and, and Citrix infrastructure and, and all kinds of uh, scenarios along those lines. So once you've established the use cases for this particular customer, the next critical phase is the target application list. So it's important to determine existing inventory or collection processes that this customer may have. Now, obviously it's important to have those existing inventories. However, our feeling is that they may be inaccurate and some of these lists have flaws in them. So it is our recommendation to perform application assessments. Now VMware has a number of service offerings around this effort uh, in the form of a desktop application virtualization assessment and a desktop infrastructure virtualization assessment. Both of these are our PSO offerings. These assessments are mission critical for the success of a desktop and application migration. Third-party tools from companies like Liquidware Labs can provide tremendous benefit during these, this process. However, don't forget about Windows 7 application compatibility. Uh, this is by far one of the biggest trends that's happening right now. Uh, obviously, customers get that their applications need to transition to Windows 7, but what they don't understand is how difficult and what percentages of their applications are actually going to be compatible with Windows 7. Uh, our numbers are finding that as low as 30% of a customer's applications are in fact compatible with Windows 7, which means 70% of their applications will have to be remediated to essentially move uh, or, or you know, continue the, the Windows 7 desktop migration. Third-party tools like ChangeBase and AppDNA are tools that can assist during this process, and we are building relationships with both companies as we speak. Early investigation has determined that Windows 8 has the potential to cause additional application compatibility conflicts, just as Windows 7 did. So this isn't really good news. Now obviously it's not official yet, but that is what our early findings are, are showing. And again, this is going to provide a tremendous amount of strain on customers as they just often finished, you know, or have started a Windows 7 migration. Now they're being hit with the idea that Windows 8 could potentially cause the same types of problems. There's a new EUC assessment strategy that's developing in which 
uh, partners and consultants will help customers understand all of their entire application stack. So SaaS and ThinApp and native install and legacy and where these applications will go. So, you know, we're, we're moving away from there's only one type of assessment, which is an application virtualization assessment. Really what it comes down to is the customers want someone to hold their hand during this application migration and where are these apps going to go? And this is where Horizon comes into play and another of a, a number of other VMware initiatives. Really important steps. After the target installation, the target application phase, we work towards application integration design. Uh, this phase is heavily based on the target application list and the design enablement workshops. The primary goal of this phase is to investigate customer application scenarios, determine application dependencies. Interviews with customers and help desk, help desk staff will determine critical problem applications. This might be the most critical step in this process because oftentimes the customers have tremendous pain around specific applications because they won't integrate with and, and, and or conflict with other applications. It is important to identify those and address them accordingly. And oftentimes ThinApp can mold itself around those scenarios, but you really just got to get under the surface and identify them. At which point you have the ability to position ThinApp features to alleviate these integration points. Application management design. Determine update strategies for application scenarios. Will AppSync be used? Will the in-place update mechanism be used? Will AppLink be used? Uh, determine backup strategies for ThinApp repositories. You know, will, will DFS be used? Uh, will just straight SIFS shares be used? You know, who the, who the storage vendor of choice is? Can you reuse existing storage? These types of uh, questions need to be addressed. Uh, determine the customer application footprint. Do they have remote offices? Are they attempting to use and leverage applications across these WAN uh, connections? Investigate existing application management processes. Do they use third-party tools like an AppSense? Do they have other tools? Have they written their own tools? So again, these types of questions need to be answered and oftentimes ThinApp can seamlessly integrate into those processes, but it's important to identify them first before you can move forward and properly design uh, for the customer. Packaging infrastructure standards. This is often a, an overlooked step in the process. Uh, determine if the customer has a packaging team because oftentimes they do or they're inefficient or overly efficient or nobody knows they exist. So I've seen all ranges of, of this uh, scenario. Uh, oftentimes they are overburdened with the demand of, of creating and uh, packaging MSIs. So again, it's important to determine existing MSI packaging strategies the customer has. Identify third-party tools leveraged by the customer. Uh, companies like Flexera uh, with Admin Studio and Symantec Wise Package Studio are two of the biggest technologies leveraged by customers today. However, there is inherent stress around the use of those tools and ThinApp can potentially alleviate some of that stress by seamlessly integrating with those tools, uh, which reduces overall training time and knowledge transfer as they adopt and move to ThinApp. Identify existing application or media storage processes. This is mission critical as to how you're going to store and deploy uh, thin app packages over the network. Really looking to move towards this central thin app repository that can feed all kinds of deployment processes. At which point you can then position tools like the thin app converter or thin app factory to alleviate the stress on those existing packaging teams. Deployment infrastructure design. Investigate existing application deployment processes. Uh, again, looking at the various ESD solutions. Don't be alarmed when the customer admits issues with these existing processes. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a customer and it's come about that they have, let's just call it ESD solution A, 
and they vent for an hour on how unhappy they are with the solution and they would like to move to another process or another solution which unfortunately means you know gutting an existing tool and implementing something else which delays time delays the process and extends a, a desktop migration process uh, significantly at which point don't be too quick to suggest replacing those existing processes considering the added time and cost of such an effort so you're in this as the trusted advisor you're in this strange position where they're expressing pain they're expressing concern but the concept of taking HP radio and removing it from a system and implementing SCCM could be a two-year effort so you really need to be careful about what types of suggestions you make uh, in this instance I have found that the majority of enterprises just honestly want to vent about those ESD solutions. So ThinApp has the ability to often alleviate the stress uh, and the concern around those solutions, to which point the customer is reinvigorated with that solution. Uh, for example, a lot of customers that have legacy Alteris environments express concern around the slowness, the supportability, and you know just the overall efficiency of that tool by eliminating the native installs of those applications being deployed over Altaris, ThinApp can often streamline this process and renew the focus and renew the uh, comfort level with that tool, thus providing a tremendous amount of ROI. So again, obviously that doesn't have to happen. It's not something that we push. It's just something that naturally happens as a result of the flexibility of ThinApp. It's very important to determine current or future desktop migration efforts. It's also important to determine current or future VDI migration efforts as well. One thing to also understand is don't be afraid to talk about Citrix in this, in this manner. Uh, a lot of people think that just because Citrix is a competitor, you know, we're not able to talk about them, which is absolutely not true. ThinApp actually is a tremendous use case uh, on top of Citrix. There's a lot of organizations, uh, partner organizations, whose sole focus is to sell ThinApp to Citrix environments to alleviate a lot of those, a lot of the stress and usability and functionality of a Citrix environment. So many customers express, uh, you know, great comfort with ThinApp integrated into Citrix, and it alleviates you know a lot of that uh, a lot of that stress so it's it's definitely an interesting use case and needs to be investigated so to summary uh, follow the PSO ThinApp plan and design kits that are available on the vault and partner central consult the ThinApp plan and design guides which are meant to be uh, an overlay to the ThinApp plan and design kits Critical focus on the design enablement workshops. Don't ever rush through them. Uh, honestly, again, the customers just want to vent, and it's important to let them vent and document the findings that you, you receive, uh, which will then drive a much stronger, plausible uh, design. Application assessments are critical to the success, and don't be afraid of third-party tools. We've talked about a number of tools today that can help. Uh, in the process. So again, uh, Windows 7 application compatibility assessments along with just straight application assessments, the reuse of existing MSIs, and the ability to leverage the ThinApp Converter and ThinApp Factory to streamline the packaging process, and whenever possible reuse existing deployment infrastructure and processes to gain a tremendous amount of ROI from a ThinApp perspective for customers. Thank you very much. This concludes the ThinApp Bootcamp series, Design Best Practices. Thank you.